Uh, um, my name is Jim Patterson, I'm from Port Soy and I'm a musician. No, I mean I never even thought about being a musician at all. Uh, it, it was just a kind of a freak thing that happened. A, a, a man called Tom Wright from South Shields turned up at Port Soy Primary School when I was 10 I think and um, he started dishing out instruments and we all got a chance to play one. Um, first of all I started on flugelhorn uh, which I, I still love, I love the, 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 the instrument itself, but I, I didn't quite take to it. I graduated down to trombone, which I, and then I loved that. And, uh, and I've been on trombone ever since, really, since about the age of 10. Uh, my musical break came from answering an advert in the Melody Maker. Uh, it was a Friday night, I'd been up at the Park Hotel, my usual Friday night in the Park Hotel. I'd bought the Melody Maker in the, the dinner time. Um, I went home after I'd been to the park hotel and I saw this advert and I thought, oh, well, you know, I had a bit of Dutch courage, so I thought I'll just phone up. Uh, and I spoke to Kevin Rowland's brother Pete and he, um, he was a bit confused with what I was saying. He said, phone me back in the morning. So I phoned him back on Saturday morning and uh, I arranged to go down to Birmingham the week later and uh, did an audition. And then the week after that, I was in Birmingham and I'd been you know, space of two weeks I went from working in the mill where my dad worked to uh, being in Dexys Minute Runners. 78 was difficult. We, uh, I left my job and went down to Birmingham and I had to sign on the dole. Uh, we were all in the dole. Um, it was very hard. We were living in uh, bed sits and we actually rehearsed in squats because we couldn't afford to uh, hire a studio. It was tough. Uh, but because there was such a, a band spirit, you know, we were, we were kind of a, a gang almost, you know, and we, uh, we sort of looked at, for each other and um, we helped each other out financially, if, you know, shared a pack of fags at the time and things like that, you know, so it was tough the first couple of years. We didn't make any money whatsoever. Uh, well, playing in Dex is, is, is uh, open my eyes to the world, I suppose. Uh, I managed to achieve my one and only ambition in life, and that was to appear in Top of the Pops. Uh, I saw Alice Cooper in 1972 doing schools out, and I, I actually stood up and I said to my mum and dad, who were watching, I saw Alice Cooper and I said, you're going to see me on there one day. And it wasn't a sort of, it was a prediction, I suppose, almost. You know, it wasn't, oh, I wish I could. It was, I'm going to be on that one day. And I, for a 16-year-old trombone player, I mean, the, the opportunities are a bit small but um, I just had this feeling I was going to get on there. So top the pops, um, travelling obviously to America and Australia, uh, meeting pop, other pop, uh, I'm not a pop star, but meeting pop stars, um, meeting nice people, you know, and being able to entertain people and just giving this, well what music's meant to do, you know, bring people together and make them happy, dance, laugh, sing, uh, that's, I think that's probably the biggest reward. I came back to Pont Soy because I'd always planned to. Um, my wife and I, we live in the house that I was born in now. Um, uh, we were planning to come back in 2025, 2026, but um, unfortunately my wife in April 2016 had a, a massive stroke. Uh, and everything just changed in the blink of an eye. Um, so I had to make a decision, stay in London or come back to Port Soy and, and give her the best opportunity to recover. So it was an easy decision really. I just, um, you know, packed up, sold up and we just came up. And we came up here in February 2017. And it's the best decision I've ever made in my life, I think, really. Playing in front of my home crowd is probably the scariest crowd of the lot, to be honest. But uh, the boat festival is a bit unique because there's a lot of visitors, a lot of, a lot of new people in the town as well. So, I mean, I, I don't know most of the people here. Um, I mean, I, I've still got friends from school and neighbours and... Um, but playing here, playing in front of the home crowd is a bit... Woo, you know. But I, I still enjoy it, you know, I still enjoy it. Festival is very important. It's, um, it's a chance for Port sort to shine. It's a, it's, it's got so much going for it. Um, there are a lot of clever and, and talented people in Port Soy and they need to be 
heard and seen. Uh, you know, the um, arts and crafts and all sorts. Great musicians, photographers. Uh, you know, just look behind me and you'll see what, what they come for. The music's great, obviously, as well, and the boats. Um, I mean, I'm a landlubber. I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm standing on terra firma and 20 feet away from the water, but um, I love the sea. I love watching it from a distance. You know, it's really, I mean, Port Soy's obviously got a, a long heritage of uh, fishermen and boats and stuff. So um, I think it's just, it's an opportunity to, to show what we've got. Stuffing my face full of sugar, that's probably the best highlight, uh, without having guilt, just for a couple of days. I also like singing the Sankey hymns. If they, on the Sunday night, uh, in the marquee of the Wally Green, uh, the community get together. Uh, I'm in the, the 75 Club Choir, and we sing the Sankey hymns, which kind of brings us all together. And it's, it's, a, it's about the sea, you know. It's, it's, the Sankey hymns are about fishermen and, and sailors and boats and stuff. And, uh, and I do feel quite, sort of, it's quite emotional, you know, it's some great songs, you know, when your anchor hold and um, the old rugged cross and things like that, it's, you know, it's pretty, um, I enjoy that. <laughs>